The, the shared ATS system is something that has been uh, introduced by Maastricht UEC. And in fact, the idea behind this one is that uh, if we look at the way how uh, services are provided, normally we find in all the centers they have one unique system, technical system, that is uh, supporting the services that they are doing. And in fact, the idea behind all this is, is there a justification why everybody needs to have uh, his own uh, system? Or could there be what I call a common system which can be used by more uh, service providers? And a typical example of what we have done here at Maastricht is, uh, and it started around 2011-2012, uh, so there was a discussion at that time with the Dutch military to build a unique common system for them, so which was going to be used both by Maastricht UEC and the Dutch military. And that uh, program became uh, a big success, uh, especially because what you are doing there is on one side you are lowering the cost, so everybody can use the same system, and the, on the other side you are also offering a lot of advanced features to the different uh, customers or the clients of the system. What's important for the, for the passengers is, Today what they do not recognize is that if you are flying through the, uh, through the airspace, each time your aircraft is handed over from one center to another center, there is a lot of coordination that you need to do. And this coordination can be either automated or verbal, but it's a lot of uh, coordination between different centers. By the solution that we are offering, it is what they call, there is a uh, seamless interaction between the different uh, centers. And because they are working with the same system, there is an extreme level of uh, interoperability. So that means that the flight is going to be handled with a lot better efficiency. And in principle, for the, the passengers, it means that a better service can be offered as well. The safety is improved because, for example, with the implementation that we have done for the, uh, for the Dutch military, the same level of information is available for military and civilian controllers. So before what you had is, there was a difference in amount of information available for uh, the different parties and that is now significantly improved. There are always what I would call the, the operational and the technical challenges that you have. Eh? On the operational side, you could say to operate a system like that, there needs to be a, a kind of a similar concept of operations. So that means that the controllers in one center and the other center, they are willing to work with similar procedures, processes, the way how they control the, uh, the aircraft. And then you have the typical uh, technical challenges, because the operations that we are doing is uh, what we call real-time operations. So what you see on the screen is what is real-time uh, happening. And of course, if you start to remote uh, the technical services at a certain distance, there is going to be a time slack. And the question is whether that is going to be uh, acceptable for the controller. But with modern technologies, that is no longer a limitation. And the third point I would like to mention there is also on the, the aspects of uh, security, cyber security. So the kind of connections that you have to, to make or that we are making are studied and are done in such a manner that they cannot be uh, compromised by a third party.